Welcome to Celebration, a Christian talk and variety show with outreaches across the world via television, internet, and social media. You'll hear from some of today's leading authors, preachers, singers, evangelists, songwriters, and local Christian leaders. Now here's your host, president and founder of the Destiny Television Network, Dr. J.T. Guy. Hello everybody and welcome to Celebration. We're so thankful that you chose to tune in to be a part of this great praise gathering tonight, a great time of worship. And uh, the horn section, you hear them out there, they're blowing and ready to go. They are excited and they want to get in on this song we're going to sing. But I want to open up with a scripture. This week has really been the theme of don't give up. Don't give up week. And it's been for you but it's been for me as well to not give up, to keep on going. No matter what's going on around you, you just have to hold your head up high and you just keep marching on is what you do. But I want to read you another great scripture tonight that I think will encourage you along these lines. And um, that is in Isaiah 43, verse number two. It's so familiar. Many of you know it by heart, but let me just read it to you tonight. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. And we know he was talking to the children of Israel, but we put that into our life and we know that God has not changed. And he is with us when we walk through the waters and when we go through the rivers and when we go through the fire, he is there. And then I want to read another little scripture straight down from that one that just kind of jumped out at me the other day and that was uh, same chapter 43 verse number 13 yea before the day was I am he and there is none that can deliver out of my hand I will work and who shall let it in other words the I guess I guess you could go back and say the original says who will let it hinder in other words don't worry about what's going to come against you what's going to try to hinder you he's God he's going to be with you he's going to bring you through and we want to pray with you tonight if you're going through something we want you to text the number that's going to be on your screen all throughout the program if you're watching on Facebook tonight you can comment on Facebook you can drop us a message there and we'll get your prayer request and we want to pray for you tonight our special guest is Dr. Carl Gallops from Hickory Hammock Baptist Church uh, there in Milton, Florida, a wonderful church, and we're so honored to have uh, Dr. Carl with us tonight. We're going to be talking about his new book, but we're going to talk about some other interesting things as well. And uh, we do want you to know that prayer partners are waiting to pray with you and for you right now. So take advantage of that and text us. But let's sing this song. Maybe this will get you up and get you going tonight. It says we're walking on the edge of a miracle. And this will be on my new CD that's coming out very, very soon. So uh, we'll let you know when that's available. But don't you dare give up tonight. Let's keep walking on the edge of our miracle tonight. All right. Walls of Jericho, Israel walked one day. The people laughed and scorned as their God they obeyed. He promised that on the seventh day a miracle they would see. Those walls will crumble down. Just keep walking and believe. We are walking on the edge of a miracle. These walls are coming down. Well, this is the seventh day. And it's the seventh time around So shout the shout of victory When you hear that trumpet sound Cause we're walking on the edge of a miracle And these walls are coming down Now if you're tired of walking around those walls in your life those walls of sickness, pain and doubt, unbelief and strife. Remember every step just brings you closer to the sound. The sound of victory God promised the seventh time around. We are walking on the edge of a miracle. These walls are coming down. Well, this is the seventh day. We're on the seventh time around. So shout the shout of victory when you hear that trumpet sound. 
Cause we're walking on the edge of a miracle And these walls are coming down We are walking on the edge of a miracle These walls are coming down Well this is the seventh day Thank God we're on the seventh time around So shout the shout of victory When you hear that trumpet sound Cause we're walking on the edge of a miracle And those walls are coming down No matter what you're going through tonight, get the Word of God inside of your heart. Let it come out of your mouth. Encourage you. You know, the Apostle Paul said that we are to think on things that are good, pure, lovely, of pure report. And those are the things that help us keep on going. The Bible also said that He's not given a spirit of fear, but of power of love and a sound mind. So when fear comes against you, remember, it's a spirit. You run that off and you start thinking right and positive and know that you've got this thing by the help and the grace of God and those walls are going to come down in your life tonight. I believe it in Jesus' name. So just take a step of faith right now and do like the children of Israel and just shout the shout of victory tonight, all right? Let's sing it one more time together in faith. Here we go. We are walking on the edge of a miracle These walls are coming down Well this is the seventh day You're on the seventh time around So shout the shout of victory When you hear that trumpet sound Cause we're walking on the edge of a miracle And these walls are coming down Oh they're coming down Walls are coming down in our life tonight. No matter what it is, they're coming down in Jesus' name. One thing I've learned in my life and uh, here on this earth and in my life as a Christian, and that is that things always seem to go better when I start praising. And when our family used to travel and sing, I was the one that sang those kind of songs. I was always singing the upbeat songs and Dad kind of done maybe the middle of the road and the slower. And then my sister Stephanie, she sang the slower song. So I was kind of the hyper one in the bunch. But I always sang those happy songs to have everybody clapping because I learned in my life that when I change my atmosphere from one of doom and gloom and I start looking at things on the bright side and I start looking at things on the positive side and I start praising the Lord that things change. And the way I look at it changes. And it might not change the situation right then, but it sure makes going through it a whole lot better. And you know what? It seems to me, and I don't know that I have any proof on this. We, I'm not going to ask Dr. Carl if it's anywhere really in the Word. <laughs> but I do know that when you start praising the Lord, it seems to me that you come out of it a lot faster than when you're just moping and when you're feeling sorry for yourself and 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 thinking about how bad you got it. Let this song encourage you tonight as well. It says, all that I can say is praise the Lord. I wandered down that road of guilt and shame I lost it all, seeking wealth and fame. I hit the bottom so hard I couldn't stand. I found the king, and now I'm a brand new man. All that I can say is praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, all that I can say is praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Would you like have sweet peace of mind surrender all to God now one more time he will 
give you strength in time of need. Lift your voice, let praises be your seed. Come on and try it at home. All that I can say is praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. All that I can say is praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. All that I can say. the Lord, praise the Lord, all that I can say is praise the Lord, 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 praise the Lord. try that right where you are right now just say praise the Lord just praise him and begin to thank him and I promise you you will start to see a turn in that we're going to take you to the word right now if you haven't had an opportunity to read your Bible today take just a moment and hear these scriptures that dad's going to read for you over the next two and a half minutes and then we're I'm going to go over and join Pastor Carl tonight and we're going to bring some good news to you and share with you from the Word as well. So let's go right now to the Word with my dad, and we'll be right back after this little message. Think not that I am come to destroy the law of the prophet. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth passes, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever call, whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a call shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thy food shall be in danger of hell fire. Thank you so much for that word, Dad. We appreciate it. He was going to be with us tonight, but he uh, I think he was off from the funeral home today, so he was doing some work out around his barn. Yeah. We'll miss him. And they said he went to bed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bless his heart. So, because Becky said he, he was like, I'm coming yeah. because Pastor Carl, and he yeah. loves Pastor and Carl. I love your dad, too. I was just saying that before we went yes. live. Yes, you and were. I, I didn't even realize we were that close to going live. Yeah, so. and uh, you're his kind of, uh, <laughs> he loves the things you write about and, and teach about and Thank stuff. You. He, Thank he's you. all about that. So uh, yeah. I want to share this little praise report before we get into talking. Uh, with Pastor Carl here, that uh, last night uh, they called and requested prayer for Pastor Moultrie. Uh, I believe he's is he from, he's from Milton Pace area. I don't know if you know. I'm with the name right now. And uh, they called in. He was going in today for uh, heart stents, 
clogged arteries and was having an operation for that today. They took him back, uh, took him back to the OR and just a few minutes after uh, they went into the OR, the doctor comes out to his wife and tells his wife, said, I can't believe this, he is absolutely fine. They are his, I guess his arteries clean as a whistle, imagine no blockage. That. Imagine that. Nothing wrong. <laughs> Said Pastor Fred is a strong man of God, and we told him on the phone uh, earlier today that we had called the DTV prayer line, and he had some prayer warriors praying for him and Amen. for his healing Amen. today. Yeah. So we All are, Lord isn't Jesus. that great? That's Jesus amazing. still yeah. heals yeah. today. So if you need prayer about whatever, anything in your life, you can text that number and just what God's done for him. He'll do for you as well. And when you're doing that, tell the prayer partner, give the prayer partner your uh, mailing address because we want to put you on and give you uh, our newsletter every month, let you know everything that's going on here at Destiny Television. And so you'll know when uh, we got uh, guests like Dr. Carl coming. And uh, I was so encouraged by this last night. And uh, these are consistent viewers on Roku that we we're having tune in now. Mm -hmm. And I shared these again last night, all of these new places. Uh, did, we, did we determine it was 18, I think, John Christian, new cities, Faraday, Louisiana. You know, that's where the, uh, that's where uh, Mickey Gilly, Jerry Lee Lewis, and Brother Swaggart's all from Faraday, Louisiana. Yeah, and so, so is Boudreaux and Thibodeau. And, and Boudreaux's from and, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, Fontenot. Tibble. Fontenot yeah, is from the, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Robertsdale, <laughs> Alabama. Seattle, Washington. Trustville, Alabama. Uh, St. I believe that's Genevieve, Missouri. Gallatin, Tennessee. Henderson, Texas. Pale City, Alabama. Monroeville, Alabama. Tempe, Arizona. Jackson, Alabama. And Birdsboro, Pennsylvania. All new cities uh, that consistently are watching on Roku. These are not one-time hits. These are consistent right, right. things. That's great. And the cool thing about the Roku channel now is you can go and watch on-demand programs. So if you're watching this live and uh, something comes up, somebody calls, you know they always call at the wrong time, right. and they call and need to talk to you, you can go back and watch tomorrow this program on demand. And now, as of last week, we're broadcasting 24 hours a day live on YouTube. So you can watch it on YouTube 24 hours a day. Uh, Dr. Carl Gallups is no stranger to the DTV family. He is uh, a top-selling author. He has literally been on a, 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 a whirlwind, tour. A whirlwind <laughs> tour of uh, promoting and preaching and doing conferences. And, uh, and they told me when I came in a while ago, Pastor Carl is operating on two hours of sleep. I wish you wouldn't have told that. I love you though, brother. But see, <laughs> no, that's, that's how faithful you are. Because I know your body probably yeah. said, well, call them and tell them I'm yes. not going to DTV well, tonight. Yeah. And, and, and just in case people are thinking, oh, he's such a godly man. It really has nothing to do with that so much as it does with the airplane couldn't land in the fog. Yeah. And we had to turn around and go back. And we got in at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. And I had to get up at 4 to go back to the airport. And then we circled the airport again for hours. We uh, finally got in, and so wow. I arrived. So you had, you flew <laughs> two from, hours of sleep <laughs> from Atlanta to Pensacola today. Well, I was all over the country, but when but I, was, I was coming back home trying to from make the that fog leg. last night and the yeah. fog last night in Pensacola. They Ooh. he tried to land several times and couldn't, yeah. and finally pulled out. So we've got to go back to Atlanta. Well, by the time we got there. And I got to a motel. It was two o'clock in the morning. Well, I had to be up at four. Yeah, right. Because How we had to sleep? catch the yeah. shuttle at five to to meet the gate at six thirty and go through TSA and and so then when we came back this morning, it was funny because the people at the gate, you know, they said, "Now listen, we're going to leave at seven o'clock." I uh -huh. said, "For where?" They said, "Pensacola." I said, "You do know that fog will still be there yeah. until mid morning." And they said, yeah. "What? What?" I said, "I live there. I know what I'm talking uh -huh. about." Sure enough, they left. We get there, the pilot comes on and says, folks, the fog is still here. We're going oh, to have to keep circling and, until it <laughs> breaks. Oh, Lord, it, again? Yeah, again. I said, <laughs> I tried to tell you. They should have anyway, let you be in the pilot yeah, today. They should have. You know, I stayed in a Holiday Inn Express. So, they, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, and I saw a YouTube video about how to fly a jetliner. Well, there you go. So, so you could have done should, it. I could have done it. You could have yeah. done it. And you yeah. definitely don't want to be late in that Atlanta airport. And a little disclaimer. Okay. With only two hours of sleep, there's no telling what I'm going to say here today. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, and this is live television, brother. That's so right. You, that's you, right. No yeah. editing tonight. This is it. What you see is what you yeah. get. Now everybody's glued. Yeah. What's that crazy yeah. preacher going to say? <laughs> now you said when they started my second song, I said I, it might be somewhere in the Bible. You might said be. it was. Yeah, you said something about giving praise and thanksgiving and that uh, uh, and, and, and how God blesses that mm -hmm. and, and, and kind of moves it, it along. It moves it along. Well, it is true and, and, and I can tell you from Genesis to Revelation, literally, mm -hmm. and people, uh, the Word of God, and I'm just going to paraphrase sure. it all right now. I mean, excuse me, I'm going to condense it. Sure. Um, and, and, and that is when we praise God for what He has done in our life. Mm -hmm. See, the Bible says to give thanks mm -hmm. in everything. Yeah, it doesn't that. say, as you know, give thanks for everything. <laughs> I mean, right. I mean, if hor something horrific that the yeah. that this fallen world has done to you, mm -hmm. death, you know, disease. Right. We don't say, "Oh, thank you for that death, thank you for that disease," but we can say, "Thank you, God, for all the blessings that you put in my life." Now, show me how I can use this for your glory, That's right. or show me yeah. what I can do to bring honor to you in the midst of this. Mm -hmm. You see, it's like the just like Job. He said. Even if the Lord slays me, yes. yet will I serve Him. That's right. You understand? Yes, I mean, sir. he finally got to the point where he yeah. realized. Yeah. Listen, a lot of times in my church, when we're doing the tithes and offerings, mm -hmm. right in the middle of our worship service, it's an act of worship and thanksgiving. And mm -hmm. almost every Sunday, you've mm -hmm. been in my worship sure. service. Sure. I'll say a little something about that. Mm -hmm. You know, just a little something, mm -hmm. a minute of just mm -hmm. reminding people what we're doing. Right. But I've often said, when you can get to the point where you put your offering, your tithe into the kingdom work, just mm -hmm. release it and say, Lord, I know your word says you yeah. will bless me for doing this. That's right. But Lord, I don't expect a blessing. My if gosh. I'm going to give it, whether you bless me or not, I will continue to give it yeah. even if you never bless me again. That's right. As long as I have a dollar, I've got a dime. If hey. I've got a dime, I've got a penny. Go ahead. And That's so right. I'm going to give it why? Because you've already been so good yeah. to me, yeah. it's almost embarrassing, Lord. Mm. You know, think about wow. that, brother. And so, so anyway, back to what you said. From Genesis to Revelation, the, the Word of God tells us over and over, when we praise Him, when we have that heart, when we love Him like mm -hmm. that, He honors that. He can mm -hmm. inhabit that. Wow, that's he, can, right. he will bless that. Yes, he will. Maybe not that, that instant. Listen, mm -hmm. it's like, a, it's like a, a father and mother, but mm -hmm. we're two men, so I'm going to say it's like a father with a child or a grandchild. Mm -hmm. If that child or grandchild has an attitude of gratefulness, yeah. an, atti an attitude of thankfulness, and every now and then gives you a word of praise, mm -hmm. and I'm using biblical words, sure. our kids aren't going to come up and say, I praise you, Daddy. Yeah. I, you, know, you know, I am so <laughs> thankful that thou art my father. They're, right. they're not going to say that. Yeah, we've but, not heard that. But no, we have, I don't, I've never heard that. But, but the attitude, the attitude, yeah. you know, thank you, Daddy. Or, I yeah. appreciate that. Hey, I can't thank you enough for what you've done here for me or whatever. Well, what does that do? <clears throat> it, it wells our heart with pride for them, in them. And we want to do more for them. That's right. We want to bless them more. Right. And because we realize they're growing, they're maturing in their understanding of, mm. of, of being grateful for things, then we want to bless them more so that they can continue to give thanks. Not necessarily to us, but just That's because good. we know it yeah. develops their character. God works the wow. same way. You know, That's Jesus right. said, if we then, being sinful fathers, mm -hmm. how much more does our Father in heaven know how to bless us? Wow. So, so when we live with an attitude of praise and thanksgiving, to give thanks in all things, mm -hmm. Paul says in Philippians yeah. chapter 4, to yeah. give thanks in all things. Yeah. When we, when, so you were singing about it. I mean, God honors that. He empowers yeah. that. Yeah. And He blesses that. So it's, it, it, it does. It builds our character I hope, uh, before the Lord. I hope my nephew and niece are listening to what you're saying. Yeah, yes, I do too. I, the, I know. If, <laughs> the more they praise, the more they get. That's right. So I need to hear some praises. That's right. Coming on, what a great uncle I That's am. That's right, right. You know, yeah. Okay. But you know, I... Now, did I say everything you wanted me to yes, say? Yes, you did. Yeah, Thank okay. you very much. I'll pay you later. Okay. Like, so my, my, my Bible study time, and I shared this on TV, I've been in Joshua for a few uh, weeks now. And some places I just keep staying there and mm -hmm. going back and thinking, you know, I've read this before, but it didn't jump out like the other day. It just jumped out, you know, several days last week where it said that, uh, you know, uh, 
they were just basically paralyzed with fear. Mm -hmm. But you think about all that Joshua had to go through, and it's like you turn the page, you read a new chapter, and there's another army coming against yeah. them. Yeah, he was paralyzed with fear as a young man. Yes. Yeah, yeah, threshing wheat in the, in the wine press. That's right. Hiding from the enemy. That's right. Yeah. And here, every time they turned around, they got another army coming against them. Right. And it's like, we're, we're God's chosen people. We're blessed. And why are we being attacked every time we turn around? Why do we got to take another country? What, doing all that? But see, God had a plan and a purpose for all that. But yes, they didn't did. give up. That's right. They still kept on going. Right. And in the midst of it, mm -hmm. He asked questions, he put That's out the right. fleece, he yeah. prayed, he said, wow. Lord, yeah. Lord, speak to me something, give me some, speak power into me, speak some courage into me, mm -hmm. you know, That's and, and right. so, but, it, but it's just, it's just yeah. what you and I are saying, just, yeah. it's, I tell folks in my church all the time when I'm preaching, I say, look, our day-to-day -day living for the Lord, mm -hmm. we strive for perfection, of course, but even the Apostle Paul said, I, you know, things I don't want to do, I do. And the yeah. things I do want to do, right. I don't. But right. thanks be unto God through yeah. Jesus Christ who gives right. me strength. So what he's saying is it's, it's practically impossible in a fallen world, in our, in our fallen flesh. If it wasn't for the, the Holy Spirit in us, we, we yeah. could do no good, Amen. really. Amen. But, but in the midst of day-to-day -day life, I tell Christians, look, just be real, mm -hmm. okay? And keep your eyes on the Lord. Mm -hmm. Keep moving forward because... It is in the, in the heart of our Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. It's not so much about moment-by-moment moment perfection in our mm -hmm. life as it is about moment-by-moment moment direction. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. In other words, yes, of sir. course we strive for, for some semblance <clears throat> of perfection. We want to please our Heavenly Father. Sure. Of course we do with the Holy Spirit's help. Of course oh, right, we do. Right. But even when we fail, we get up, we make it right, and we keep going keep forward it. with Jesus Christ. Direction. That's right. I've been the pastor of one church, as we're speaking now live, for 34 years. Wow. One church. And, and I say that just, just to use this illustration. So, and I am very blessed to do a sure. lot of media, you and sure. people around the United States and around the world. And so I travel a lot. I do a lot of conferences and things. And, 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 I, and I say, so let's say somebody met you and they said, where do you go to church? Well, I go to Hickory Hammock. Who's your pastor? Carl Gallops. Oh, yeah, he's that guy that I see on TV or whatever. Uh -huh. I read his books. Mm -hmm. and, and then they, th this is a joke, of course, but then <laughs> they say, you know, I really love his books. I love him. He must be a perfect guy, a perfect yeah. pastor. Of course, my church members would die laughing. <laughs> I've been there. They've raised me. They, they yeah. know all my warts right, and scars, right, and, right. you know, but, but of course they would say, well, no, he's not anywhere near perfect. But well, well, why is he your pastor? Why do you sit under his ministry for 34 years? Mm -hmm. And prayerfully, mm -hmm. they would say something like, well, he is not perfect, but he's real. Mm -hmm. And he loves God. Mm -hmm. And the direction of his life is always centered towards serving the Lord. Even when he falters, even when he mm -hmm. makes a mistake, he makes it right and keeps going. He's faithful. And that's what the Lord blesses. That's right. And so along the way, that's right. along the way, yeah. as we're giving thanks mm -hmm. and praise, even in the midst mm -hmm. of a crummy day, that's right. the Lord says, you know what? I can bless that. So you're right. It's Even, all through the Word. And I'm not sure how old Joshua was in chapter 24 when he said, but as for me and, me my, and house, my house, we will serve the Lord. After everything he's been through. That's right. You know, all the times he could have been killed, all the things that could have taken this out or that out of his life, he said, but through it all, mm -hmm. this family is going to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. We're going to stay faithful to the one who's been faithful to us. Right. Isn't that right. amazing? It is. That's Absolutely. the kind of testimony we need in our life. We want to be able to say that when, right. you know, it's, it's cute to have that little scripture hanging over your door. I've seen it in people's right. homes, you know. Right. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Right. Well, but when you're, mean? but yeah. yeah, what does it mean? But when your time on this earth is up, yeah. you right. know, after everything you've been through, can they say you served Right, the Lord. Right, that's and it. that's that's commendable to be there thirty something years. Well, I and you had not killed all your sense. members. Well, no, I just they had yeah, killed you. I've got them fooled. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I try not to let them ever hear a good preacher. You know, yeah, I, right. I just say, stay away from that TV. Stay away. From, yeah, know, don't watch you know, that. Or yeah, don't to watch them. that. That's right. <laughs> We're going to talk about this new book uh, after uh, after the nine o'clock hour. So don't go anywhere. Okay. Uh, we want to talk about it. It's called Gods of the Final Kingdom. 
and uh, it's 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 very very interesting. You don't Thank want you. to miss that because we want to talk about this book and uh, some other things coming up. Uh, like I said, in the nine o'clock hour. If you're watching on Facebook tonight, would you hit that share button and let other people know? that uh, we are here tonight. If you're watching on Roku, we'd love to hear from you, know where you're watching from, or um, on YouTube. If you're watching the YouTube uh, stream, let us hear from you. The number's on the screen. You can text and tell us where you are from so that we can rejoice what you're doing. And prayer requests, thank you for those that are coming in online. And uh, please remember, you can text those to us as well. 24 hours a day, we are here. 24 hours a day to pray with you and pray for you, and uh, we want to hear from you. It's, it's a two-way thing here. Mm -hmm. It's great to be here, but it's really wonderful when we hear from the other side yes. of the camera, yes. and we know that people are watching. Just as I was singing that one song, I was looking into that one camera, and just the thought hit me how powerful that one piece of equipment is. That one camera that I'm looking in right now is literally reaching thousands of people, mm -hmm just when it's plugged into wires and switchers and all, but that one piece of equipment can literally take the gospel all to the around the world. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And with on demand, it continues, continues and it goes and yeah. it goes. Yeah. And that is so powerful that we live in a day and time. Can you imagine what Paul could have done with television? Yeah. How, how much further he could have expanded his ministry and got the word out. Are those guys like Billy Sunday? Mm-hmm. Wow, you know, they probably wouldn't have let him been on TV because probably not. He was a he'd rowdy fella. Yeah, he'd have banned been banned from YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> they was no, we can't have him on YouTube. Yes, no, uh, uh, he would have been uh, in Facebook jail a whole yes, lot. A lot. But yeah. uh, so we have the opportunity <laughs> with technology today to take this message to the world. And we need your help. Those of you that will stand with us, we need to hear from you. If you've never done it, if you're one of those people that you watch but you've never supported, do that. I've, I've been where you are. I've watched ministries before and never sewn into that ministry and never said thank you. Don't be like I was. I try to be better at that now. Even now, I will find myself watching a ministry at home, and I will call their prayer line and tell them, hey, I just want you to know I'm calling from Atmore, Alabama, Enjoy the ministry, appreciate it. And I will send a love offering to various ones from time to time. But I want them to know because it's one thing to sit here and to know people there, but it's another thing to hear. And then it's another thing when we partner together because there's something about partnership. When we come in agreement and we work together, we can do so much more for the kingdom of God. And God is enabling us to be able to do that. You know, uh, almost a year and a half ago, I guess it was, uh, we, uh, wow, this, yeah, because this, this August, I think, or July will be a year, will be two years. Whew, time flies, Pastor. Um, that we, we took this step of faith and said, we're going to take Destiny Television to where God's called it to be. And I took that step of faith and left my church, and here I am. And the doors that have opened for us have been so wonderful. But we have to have help to go through those doors, all right? And tonight, for everybody that calls and everybody that helps us out uh, with at least a $50 donation tonight, we're going to send you Pastor Carl's book, Gods of the Final Kingdom, and we're going to talk about that in just a moment. But first, we're going to go to a moment with Aunt Charlotte, and uh, I hope this uh, few moments of uh, I don't know what she's doing tonight. I normally have it here in front of me, but I don't know if it's a poem or, or what it is. Inspiration but, and encouragement, I'll bet you. But it's going to be good. Because I know Aunt Charlotte. That's right. It's going to be good, whatever <laughs> it, it be. is. So let's go to a moment with Aunt Charlotte right now, and we'll be right back with Dr. Carl Gallops. I'm going to give a short excerpt from Laura Kane's poem, Face to Face. I'd walked life's way with an easy tread. I'd followed where comforts and pleasures led. Until one day in a quiet place, I met the Master face to face. Met him and knew him, and my face blushed to see that his eyes full of sorrow were fixed on me. And I faltered and fell, oh, make me meet, to follow the steps of the wounded feet. My thought is now for the souls of man, I've lost my life only to find it again. Ever since one day in that quiet place, 
I met the Master face to face. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Thank you, Aunt Charlotte. Mm -hmm. I love that little, yeah. I guess it's a poem in yeah. it. Yes. And uh, just, uh, she has, that one she has quoted for years yeah. here on DTV. She was a school teacher for years. She was a years. school teacher yeah. for many years, yes. She was my fourth grade yeah. history teacher. Yeah, I bet she's got stories to tell. And you have her on television here? I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm a brave guy, aren't I? I'm telling you. Uh, Alabama history <laughs> is what she taught us. I mean, I learned, we learned, I, I will never forget, she made us, we had to memorize all the counties. Yeah. in Alabama. Yeah. And uh, I grew to hate the, the, the map of the state of Alabama yeah. because she had it drawn out there and all the counties were blank. You had to put what county was where and it was like, oh no. So I was scarred by the, the, yeah. the map How of Alabama. How many counties are in Alabama, do you remember? I have no idea. Yeah. I don't know now. Yeah. How many is in Florida? Do you 67. Know? Oh, 67. Yeah. I was a law enforcement officer here. Well, we that's had to know true. all that. That's we had right. to know them all. And okay. The tag numbers back in the day when the tag numbers, the numbers indicated the county and you had to know that. And so Why yeah. did they change that? I don't, I don't know. Now they just wrote the county. Now they write the county name at the bottom of the tag. Make it easy. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Back in my day. Sound yeah. like an old man now, yeah. don't it? Back, back in, in my, my day, Sonny. Because 30 had, used to be a Scambia <laughs> County, Alabama. Yeah. I don't even remember them all now. Yeah. Yep. And uh, I can't remember what Baldwin County was, but yeah, you used to see those and you'd be like, oh, well, I know they're from Baldwin County. That's right. Or by whatever. The, by the number. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, so, that, and that usually helped people kind of memorize the, yeah. the counties and yeah. everything. Anyway. It's, uh, we digress. Things change. We don't digress. They? Yeah. 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 <laughs> things change in this world. Yeah. <laughs> and we better go with the change or we're going to get left behind. And I'll never forget hearing um, uh, Laverne Tripp actually one time in a sermon, he said, uh, you might as well get used to it because the only thing that's not going to change is change. Yeah. And I thought about that because I'm bad to not like change. I can get in a rut and I want things to stay the way they yeah. are. I think almost everybody's that yeah. way. To, to one degree or another. Yeah. And yeah. I, but I'm, because see, they kept telling me, you know, uh, mm. uh, pastor, you need, you need to take DTV digital. You need need digital cameras and all that stuff, you know, you got to go, needs to go, all that equipment. I was like, yeah, but all that equipment's paid for and that equipment, <laughs> and it looks good. And they're like, but it's so big and bulky and you don't need all that anymore. It needs to be digital. And I'm like, well, I don't know, and, but I'm glad we made the change. Yes. I, I'm accustomed to smaller cameras now. Yes. Compared, you know, the big ones that yeah. everybody used I, I, to have. I remember the big cameras at DTV. Yeah, so I'm thankful yeah. that we did do that. It makes life a lot yes. easier on us now. But that was cutting edge technology at one time. At one time. Yeah. 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 Do you remember the first cell phones that you saw, the great big old radio things with the antenna and everything? People laugh. And see, and I, yeah. I tell young people now that go around and say, well, you've got an Android, you've got an mm -hmm. Apple, you've got this, you've mm -hmm. got, well, you've got that model number, that model number. Yeah. Oh, you need to get with it. And I say, you know, guys, y'all need to calm down a little bit because your children are going to be laughing at you for what you're using right now. <laughs> They're going to think you're so <laughs> old fashioned. And then I'll give the examples of mm -hmm. back in our day, in you our know, day. The, the first ones that came out. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's crazy. Can you imagine how, where it's going to go from oh, here? Oh, technology is just advancing on, on the bell curve. It's just like... Yeah. Oh, because they say there's, there's as much information in this as it was the computers that it took to launch. Uh, that's correct. We carry around in our hand more yeah. computing power than, you know, yeah. than just 10 years ago that was in any kind of, any kind of PC. So. And, and now you know, we're <clears> moving <throat> into the age of quantum computing very quickly. And uh, as we harness yeah. more and more information uh, about uh, quantum physics and quantum mechanics and mm -hmm. transfer of information through particles and mm -hmm. atomic particles, and I I'm telling you, it's, it's, getting, getting, it's getting ready to explode yeah. again, no pun yeah. intended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and so that's what our children's children will be dealing with. But, the, but does not scripture tell us that there will yes, be an does. explosion of knowledge? Yeah, it's in Daniel chapter 12. Mm -hmm. Plus, as we read through the New Testament, by the time you get to the book of Revelation, the, imagine this. John was given these visions of the, of, and glimpses of the future 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. He had to have been shown or transported, maybe it was some time travel or yeah. something that God did, yeah. interdimensional vision mm -hmm. and, and, and showing. He had to have been shown at least our time. That's true. And, and beyond. That's right. Okay. So how do you take a guy 
that's living in an age where people are still riding camels and horses everywhere they go or walking with sandals and take him into the space age and into the computer age yeah. and into the age of mass transportation wow. and, in, and, and instantaneous information communication systems. How do you take him? How, how, what does he think when he sees computers and cell phones wow. and spaceships and jet airplanes and, and, and atomic weapons and drones and wow. robots wow. and artificial intelligence right. and, and genetic editing? What, is, what does he do with that mm. when you're when you're walking everywhere and riding camels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, but when you read the book of Revelation, it speaks of things like the whole world will see him at once. The whole world will be forced to take a mark. The whole world will worship him. Mm -hmm. He will call down fire from heaven. All of this will be in accordance with the power of Satan, mm -hmm. who is the prince of the power of the air. Mm -hmm. And all of that's in the word of God 2,000 years ago. I tell people all the time, you know, when John delivered that book of Revelation to the seven churches, mm -hmm. I don't think he got invited to preach many prophecy conferences. I bet he did. I bet, <laughs> you know, they probably said, Man, what is this? <laughs> what? I was shown this. Sure yeah, you were. Right. Yeah. Crazy man. Yeah, crazy man. That's right. Wow. But, That's but, a thought. But as it turns out, here we are 2,000 years the other side of it. So when we come to those passages about seeing everything at once, images that are made to live and breathe, you know, we listen and say, yeah, well, Carl, we all know that. What, well, why do we dismiss it? Because all of the technology to make all of that happen already exists in our life, wow. and we're the first generation on the, in the history of humanity to see it happen. Now, I will admit, all, not everything there might be pulled off by technology. Yeah. There can be some literal, some sure. things from the heavenly realm or the demonic realm that's involved too. But the bottom line is we also have technology wow. that can do that's those right. things. So, so yeah, I, I, these, these next several decades are going to be astounding. I remember watching um, a clip of uh, <clears throat> Paul Crouch with uh, TBN and he, him telling that, uh, that the Lord had, had shown him these satellites. Mm -hmm. You've probably seen that old clip and uh, how they were gonna take the gospel to the world through these satellites. Mm -hmm. And they did during their time. Mm -hmm. But satellites are all, not fully, but they're becoming extinct. Mm -hmm. Because like, see when we, uh, as we started making the changes here at DTV several years ago, uh, probably four years ago, we changed all to fiber, and everybody kept telling me, "Well, you're going to have to have a, you're going to have to have a, a, a dish out here, fifty thousand dollar dish, that can, because the way we were transporting, getting equipment, all the cable head ends, mm -hmm. it would take us uh, a one hour program would take us an hour and thirty to forty five minutes to send from here to each cable head end." Mm -hmm. So you, you multiply that times three. A one-hour program would take about six hours to, before we could get it to all three mm -hmm. uh, head ends. Okay. And so they said, but satellite, and this, I, they're telling me this at NRB, that this is what I need, is this satellite dish, $50,000, and you can shoot it over there and blah, 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 and that's where you're going to get it. And so then I'm talking to the engineers at Mediacom, and they're like, no. That's so prehistoric, or so historic, whatever. Yeah. They're like, no, you don't need that. And I'm like, but satellite dishes, of course we need it. That's the way we're going to do it. And they're like, no, fiber. Yeah. Fiber is the way. You don't have to have the dish. You have to have fiber now. And so think of how it's going to, how much it could possibly change before right. the Lord comes back. Because we used to think after the creation of satellite, that it would be through satellite dishes, how that they would all see the, the ones killed in the street and all that stuff, you know, mm -hmm. prophecy fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Well, now here we are at fiber, so. And fiber optics and fiber uh, communication mm -hmm. comes from our ever-increasing knowledge of quantum theory and quantum mechanics and quantum physics. This is and true. so quantum computing is right around the corner. Wow. And, and, and uh, you know, a lot of folks that are watching know this. You can go on any tech site, the mm -hmm. computer tech site and, and uh, information exchange, information systems tech sites, and, and you'll see all of this. And, and uh, there's, there's, there's no telling. But the, but the point is, is that these words are not in the Bible. The names of these technologies are right, not in the Bible. Right. But the 
the, the presentation of them, the images of them, mm -hmm. images that live and breathe, fire mm -hmm. shooting down out of heaven at the command of a person. We can do that now. That's right. We can communicate with drones and satellites sure. and shoot anything down out of the heavens we want yes. instantaneously anywhere in the world while somebody sits somewhere in Nevada in, mm -hmm. a, in a concrete thing and, and right. looking at a monitor like they're doing a video yeah. game. Yeah. And, and it's absolutely astounding. Mm -hmm. and, and these images of that kind of technology have been in this Word of God for thousands of years before any of it was possible. And now we're the first generation to be living in the midst of it, and it's so ubiquitous that when they hear a couple guys talking about it, they say, well, you know, what's the big deal? Yeah, we know that. Drones yeah. and robots and, and quantum computing. Yeah, we, we get that. I yeah. Said, yeah, but John didn't, John. but he wrote about it. <laughs> Daniel didn't, That's but right. he wrote about it That's and right. said, it's coming yeah. in the last days. Yeah. These kinds of things, again, they didn't use the terminology, mm -hmm. but the images of all right. of that technology, it's all there in the Bible. Wow. Isn't that amazing? And by the way, it's not in any other religious book in the world. Sure. None. That's none true. of that's in the Quran. None of it's in the teachings of Buddha. None of it's in the wow. Hindu Vedas. None yeah. of it's in Nostradamus stuff. None of it's in, in the astrology charts. It's in, the, in the Word of God. Wow. We're going to talk about the new book Pastor Carl has written called Gods of the Final Kingdom. So don't go anywhere, but I want to, I want to ask you this one question before we get into this book. Because you're going to want to get this book for sure. Do and I get to answer it? Tonight, yes, okay. you, you okay. do get to answer it uh, <laughs> after I ask you. And if you call in tonight while, um, while Pastor is here, he will sign these. So if you want them uh, autographed to you or you want them to somebody else, he'll do that as well. Yeah. But you got to call in with your donation tonight to go ahead and do that. And we have, uh, we have some of these here in the studio. But my question is, before we talk about the book, so don't change the channel, is we're talking about John saw these things but didn't really know what they were. Yes. So John described a lot of things, and I've heard some preachers say that, um, uh, help me out here, was it the, the scorpion that, you know, John would say he had a head like this and a body like that or what? And so we're, we have grown up in Sunday school, and we've seen these pictures with a head of, a, of a whatever and a body of whatever. But... But do you believe that that could be, what is it, the Apache helicopter? Well, one that of them, comes or? out of Revelation 9, that comes out of Trumpet 5, and the, okay. the abyss is open. Listen, there's so many different interpretations of what that might be, yeah. and so I'm not going to be dogmatic about sure. it, but I, I will list several possibilities, mm -hmm. because as those things are described, and it talks about fire shooting out of its right. tail and fire right, shooting right. out of its mouth and, and, and causing death and destruction. Mm -hmm. and, and the sound is like that of chariots and thunder, in, and it's in the sky. Mm -hmm. I mean, so if you think about, see, see, here's the thing. Prophecy about end time often has, the, the, this is a theological, hermeneutical mm -hmm. understanding of, of, of interpreting Scripture. It's called compound prophecy. A lot of prophecy has two or three veins mm -hmm. of, of understanding mm -hmm. to it. And I can prove that to you out of Old Testament prophecies, right. but right now I want to answer this question. So, so when we come to that, not only, more than likely, it's not real locusts that are coming out of the ground <laughs> with hair like a woman and face right. like a man and shooting fire out of his tail, yeah. but it's imagery of something that John was shown mm -hmm. that he didn't have the words to describe thousands of years ago. Again, what if it is like Apache helicopters and, you know, and mm -hmm. drones and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a, a swarm of drones that are shooting uh, missiles? And I mean, how does he describe that? The yeah. noise that it makes, the sound that right. these, these right. choppers make or jet aircraft flying over, and right. carpet bombing. And, right. I mean, how do you describe that when you're riding camels 2,000 years ago? See, so you use the words you have, and the Holy Spirit guides those words, and He allows you to do that so that those words will have meaning for 2,000 years until they're fulfilled, then they will have a precise meaning. Mm -hmm. So this is why I hesitate to be dogmatic. Some right. preachers are dogmatic, oh, yeah. and, and I yeah. say to them, God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you, but if you make a mistake, you're going you're gonna to hurt a lot of people. Right, right. So until a prophecy is completely fulfilled in our presence, often we do miss a lot of the fine points. But it could be something technological that he was looking at. Mm -hmm. It could also be, of course, something very deeply supernatural and or demonic because in that particular uh, prophecy, mm -hmm. it speaks of the angel, which means messenger, That's of right. the abyss 
is given the keys, it's mm -hmm. opened, mm -hmm. his name is Apollyon or Abaddon, and mm -hmm. that's a Greek and Hebrew, and that, that means the destroyer. Mm -hmm. Well, Satan is called the destroyer in the mm -hmm. scriptures. So if somehow it's like this, it's, it's a picture of a demonic outpouring in the last days that might actually be <coughs> demonic presence and or technology that, no, that demonic knowledge is helping to push right, forward. Right. But whatever it is, it's going to cause death, destruction. Mm -hmm. It's going to be horrendous. And then you come back into the words of Jesus talking about the last days. He said, look, he says, men's hearts are going to fail them when they see what comes upon the earth. And right. Now, we've heard that all of our lives. We've preached it. We've taught it. We've sat under preaching and teaching. And said, yeah, boy, it's going to be tough. That's not what it says. It doesn't say it's going to be tough. It says people are going to die when they see it. They're going to have heart attacks right. when they see it. It's going to be something that is so unbelievable and so stunning. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus said, and you know what? In those days, even the very elect would be deceived if that were possible. Mm. Now, some means, well, that means we're not going to be here. Well, that's not what he said. Maybe it does mean that, but that's not what he said. Right. He's talking about this stunning phenomena that's going to happen when that abyss is open and this demonic outpouring comes is going to be something that the human race has never quite grasped or laid their eyes upon because Satan's going to pull out all of his power right. and all of his stops. Jesus said, Carl didn't say this. Yeah. Jesus said, well, yeah. Paul said, the word of God says, right. men's hearts will fail them. There will come something that on the face of the earth, truth's going to be thrown to the ground. Mm -hmm. um, people will be deceived. The deception will be so great that even the elect, if that were possible. Mm -hmm. and, and people say, well, what does that mean? And I say, well, whatever it is, and mm -hmm. I have some theories about what some of that stuff might be. Sure. But I say it's going to be that when it first happens, even you and me, if we're th there, we might be tempted to say, oh, my gosh, I, I didn't know. And this. Yeah. wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. This is so for... for for a little while, even we're going to question, not, right. not our faith or I the know. word, but saying. we're just going to question, what are we seeing? What's happening? This is surreal. Mm -hmm. This can't be. Oh, wait, the word of God talked about this, mm -hmm. you see. So I, I tell you, we, we have so watered down. We, the American church, we have so watered right. down. Right. We've sanitized the word of God. We've sanitized the words of Jesus. As blasphemous as that sounds, we have. Yeah, well, that's right. And, and what I'm trying to do through my books is just to go back. You know, the classical scholars, those that wrote mm -hmm. hundreds of years ago. By the way, those that wrote back into the first and second century, yeah. thousands of years ago, yeah. they took these same scriptures and they couldn't use the scientific terminology we can use yeah. now because we're a unique generation that, yeah. like this planet has never seen. Yeah. But they still spoke in terms that are going to mm -hmm. shock people when they read this book because I quote those scholars. Mm -hmm. They use terminology to express the kind of things we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And I show people, look, they got it. They understood the things that were going to happen. They understood the depth of the things that were going to happen. They understood the origin of That's those right. things. They wrote about it. But by the time we get into the 18-1900s, the 2000s in, in America, mm -hmm. We've watered it down so that we can get lots of people to come, build big buildings, get big offerings, and have, have all of our fancy stuff. Because if we start teaching and preaching yeah. what, the, what yeah. the classic scholars understood, what That's Jesus right. really said, That's right. what the Word of God really says is getting ready to come upon this earth, uh, people don't want to hear that. No, they don't. No, they want to hear about the high stock markets and how everything's lovely. And, and that's why many hearts are going to fail them because they're not, they're not going to be prepared. The, the, the gospel must be preached in balance. Yes. We have to, we have to preach the full yes. word. It's like uh, now we have a denomination uh, called full gospel. Mm -hmm. Well, that really, I'm not saying you can't have a denomination called it. I'm just saying it shouldn't just be a denomination. I should preach the full gospel. Mm -hmm. You sh every pastor should preach the full gospel of the word, That's right. but we don't do that. And then when these bad things come and happen, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. men's hearts start doing that. Yeah, Go ahead. And, th and think about that, Brother JT. In this world that we live in right now, mm -hmm. again, very quickly, think about genetic editing, artificial intelligence, quantum computing, mm -hmm. robotics, uh, drones, uh, jet aircraft, transportation, information, internet, cell phones. I mean, 
Hmm. I mean, you know, holographic images, uh, fiber optics, satellite communication, GPS, I could go on and on. In this world that we live in, we take all of that for granted. By the way, we carry a lot of that around on our cell phones. Yeah, Bluetooth, is. GPS, Wi-Fi, it's all right there right. in our hands. Internet, yeah. plus we can make a phone call. You know, my phone does everything except make good phone calls. Is yeah. yours that way? Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. is can you hear me now? Right. Can you hear me now? You know, but I can communicate. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah, I can talk to somebody in Russia, but mm -hmm. I can't talk to the guy across the street. That's right. But anyway, <laughs> the point being, with all of this <coughs> ubiquitous, astounding technology that's a part of our life, and it's on mm -hmm. a curve, so, you know, we're, we're going to sound foolish 20 years from now when sure. people watch this show sure. because it, the technology is going to be so advanced. But the point is, what in the world can you imagine in this world we live in mm. where technology and wow. miracles and wonders are around us all the time? Yeah. What in the world is going to cause you and me, not you and me, but let's mm. say we were not believers, would cause us to have a heart attack when we saw it? Wow. When you consider drones and robots and artificial intelligence, all the stuff we have now, mm. holographs, what is going to happen? And these are, the, <laughs> these are the words of Jesus now. Men's hearts are going to fail them in those days. Mm. And, and even the thought. very elect could be deceived. I mean, think on that, folks. Think on the depth of those words. Mm. Don't think of them in the Sunday school language we've been using for decades. That's right. Think of them just for what they say and that they're speaking of the last days. Mm. What in the world? It's going to be a demonic deception that True. most of us cannot even imagine right now. And that's yeah. what the Word of God clearly says. Yeah. So, I, you know, I just, my ministry is, I'm just trying to prepare wow. people to, to live a life of obedience. And I tell Christians, I said, look, it's kind of like Esther. We've been raised up for such a time as this. Mm -hmm. Don't walk around wringing your hands and, oh my gosh, it's so terrible. No, it's not. There's so much in life to enjoy. Mm -hmm. Family and friends and the beauty That's of right. the nature. And when sure. you think of the beauty of the sure. nature, it's a fallen creation. And look how beautiful it is. Can you imagine when it's restored? Mm. Can you imagine? Yeah. So, and all of that is ours. We're heirs. We're joint heirs with Jesus. The, Jesus taught us to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth one day as it is in heaven. His kingdom is coming. All things will be made new. Mm -hmm. No more crying, no more pain, no more death. But in the meantime, we live in a fallen world. So what do we do? And I tell Christians, pay the bills, mow the grass, educate the children, plan for the future. That's right. Okay? That's right. Because we don't know the day or the hour. That's right. But we do know the season we're in. Keep your head on a swivel. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Understand that the main, main, main reason we're here mm -hmm. is not to make a bunch of money and die. Right. The main reason we're here is to be ambassadors for the coming kingdom that's very close. Mm -hmm. Ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Am I right, brother? That's, that's right. what the You're Word of exactly God says. Right. Sure. So I tell, there's, there's the balance. Yeah. You know the times we live. You yeah. speak about it. Yeah. Don't run from it. But don't run up on top of a hill and wear a white robe and just wait around and wring your hands either. <laughs> Get out there and live life. Be the salt. Right. Be the light. And, um, and be paralyzed with fear. That's right. Yeah. And sing praises to his name. That's right. That's exactly heart. right. Yeah. Yeah. But there's coming a day, there's coming mm. a generation yeah. that, that's going to have to deal with some supernatural mm. stuff, some demonic outpouring that the world right now, frankly, according mm. to God's word, is not mm. ready for. People will, mm. people will drop dead with heart attacks when it begins to happen. I think we're in the beginning edge of this, edges mm. of it now, brother. In the beginning edges of it. And that's why people need to be right with God. Yes. Because just listening to you say that and the things I've not even thought about. I mean, we have, uh, like you said, holograms now. We can bring people back from the dead. Yes. We, we can, Michael Jackson did a concert a couple I was years say, ago. Elvis and Michael Jackson yeah. can tour again. Yeah. And see, we, we just take it for granted. We say, oh, yeah, that was cute. That was funny. Right. Well, well what, what is it that we we're, see? what are we going to yeah. see that's going to make us have a heart attack? Yeah. And then if you have that heart attack and it's a major one and you die from it, you better be ready. You better you. be right with because Jesus. Because there's some things, that's yeah. right, coming. This yeah. is the third in a trilogy. Now, Pastor Carl has written a total of... Well, I've got one coming out in March 2020, yeah. so that'll be 10. That'll I've be got 10. nine on the market right nine now. Nine on the market right now. But this is the third in the trilogy. Third in a series, but you can read them in any order. They stand right. alone. But I tell people, if you'll read all three... 
you will have an understanding of the word, like what we're talking about, right. that kind of depth right. and understanding of the real contextual word from Genesis to Revelation. First one was God's in thrones. God's in the second one was God's of ground zero. This latest one just released a few months ago is called God's of the Final Kingdom. Tell us about it. What okay. will they find when they when they get a copy? And they're going to get one. They're going to text that number that's on the screen tonight okay. and get a copy of this book. Okay. Well, as I do in all three of my, I call them the God's books, and I'm yeah. going to explain what that word God's means sure. because people that are hearing this for the first time say, what's he talking about? We're right. not Greeks. We don't believe in a pantheon of gods. <laughs> right. No, it's a different term. It's a biblical term. Thou shalt have no other God. gods before right. me. I am the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, God. Chris, I'm using that English word, sure. but it's a Hebrew word, Elohim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll get back to that in a moment. Okay. But, 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 but the bottom line is, um, so these three books tie together, but you can read in any order you want. People can read this. This yeah. is the third one. But if they like it, if it's ministered to them, then I would suggest go back and read the other two. And when okay. you put them, these are the kind of books you'll read, you'll highlight them, and you'll put them in your library. You'll sure. refer back to them. Right. You can use them in teaching Bible study. You mm -hmm. can use them in Sunday school. You can quote from them. Preachers can preach from them. Uh, now, it's, uh, uh, you know, it's all about the Word of God. Sure. So, yeah. Sure. But, but anyway, so God's of the final kingdom, the, it, 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 as in all the God's books, it ties together about six or seven profound topics in a, in a unified line. Okay. So what we were just talking about a moment ago about, mm -hmm. about men's hearts will fail them, truth thrown on the ground, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that topic is in there. Um, and, but but it, it starts at A, it goes to Z, it ties it together, and all of the books end very encouraging, very positive, very, you know, motivating, mm -hmm. and... Um, uh, but, but the main theme of this book is, look, you've got the Lord God mm -hmm. whose kingdom is on the way. It right. is the final kingdom. It was the first kingdom. <clears throat> it will be the final kingdom. In the middle of it, mm -hmm. you've got the prince of the power of the air, the God of this age, little mm -hmm. g. That's see, right. gods, see, mm -hmm. the word. New Testament calls Satan the God of this age. That's right. But there is only one God who is creator. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Not this one. Mm -hmm. But he's called God, little g, mm -hmm. God, big G, mm -hmm. gods of the final kingdom. Yeah. Whose is it going to be? Well, we know. You say, oh, Carl, I don't have to read the book. I know it's going to be the Lord God. <laughs> yeah, but uh -huh. there's a whole biblical accounting in between. Mm -hmm. What did Satan know about Jesus? What yeah. did he not know? Mm -hmm. What does he still not know? Mm -hmm. What did he think he knew that turned out to be wrong? Mm -hmm. How did the great hunter, Satan, who roars, walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he can find, mm -hmm. how did he become the hunted? Mm -hmm. And when did he find out mm -hmm. that all of this was, all that, the, that Jesus was doing with the cross, the resurrection, his coming through the womb of a woman, all of it was designed as a great big trap yeah. to defeat and to destroy Satan's kingdom. When did he find out? And, and, and it answers all of that. It goes all the way back to the garden where God says, mm -hmm. from the womb of a woman is going mm -hmm. to come a seed that's going to crush your head. Then it traces Satan's activity through history as most of it's recorded in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And look how Satan had to try to zero in on who that seed was mm -hmm. and what he was going to do. <clears throat> Tried to kill all the male children under Pharaoh. Try. Tried to kill all the Jews under Haman. Mm -hmm. Tried to kill all the male little boys in Bethlehem mm -hmm. under Herod. I mean, right. that and so much more. What was Satan up to? He, he was frantic looking for the seed. Because when God says in Genesis 13, yes. from the womb of a woman is going to come a seed. You will bruise his heel, mm -hmm. but he is going to crush your head. At that moment, Satan knew because of the garden fall, mm -hmm. because of what he had pulled off with Adam and Eve. <clears throat> Satan knew. Watch this, brother. He knew what and he knew why, and he knew how, mm -hmm. but he didn't know when or where or through whom. That's right. Those were the things that haunted him. Mm -hmm. And so now he's in charge of this fallen kingdom. He mm -hmm. set himself up as the prince of it, as the God of it. Mm -hmm. He thinks in his arrogance it's all his. And in Isaiah 14, he declares, and there's coming a day, he says, I will ascend to the throne mm -hmm. of the Most High God. I will be raised above the gods. I will be the God of heaven. I mean, he's so filled with himself. Yeah. And in the meantime, 
God speaks into all of that and, and, and declares what, the beginning from the end. Satan is freaked out by it. He's trying to bring it to an end. He's trying to defeat heaven's plan, right. the throne of heaven's plan. Right. You see, the book of Revelation tells us, and Peter tells us, but Jesus was the lamb slain before mm -hmm. the foundation of the world, which right. means before Adam drew his first breath, God hardly had all this figure. You know, the Word, That's who was right. God, and who was with God, mm -hmm. that Word that became flesh, right. yes. and dwelt among us, all, that, that holy trinity of power and personality mm -hmm. of God, he knew from the beginning what Satan was going to do, and he already had a plan to thwart it, yet he was going to use all of that <clears throat> to bring you and me to redemption and into his kingdom forever and ever. Wow. This is what it's all it's about all of that and so much more. You so need we can talk about some of it. To get this book. You need to get the other two. You need all three of them because you're absolutely right. And I love Rabbi Zeb's um, he put it best, a fabulous end time page turner, a masterpiece. You're going to love this book and Thank you, you are. I have a copy of it in my office that I have read through. I have not finished but I have read through, and you're right, you will make notes, <laughs> and you will highlight. Tonight, if you could help Destiny Television, we, uh, November and December, put us in a little crunch there and got us uh, in the red, but thanks to those partners that have been faithful and watched the last couple of nights, you've knocked that down, uh, you've helped us knock that debt down considerably. We're now at $3,500, so thank you so much for that. Uh, You've gone above and beyond your regular giving. And please stay faithful to your regular pledges. But if you can do extra tonight, we're going to ask you to do that and get this book. And uh, if you'll text the number that's on your screen for your donation tonight, just a donation of 50 bucks, uh, Pastor Carl is going to sign this. He'll put your name in it. Or if you want to send it to somebody. And I want to tell you something that I'm finding out by just talking to people in casual conversation. People had gotten away from reading books mm -hmm. uh, but for coming back a lot them. of ways uh, for various reasons, mm -hmm. but people are coming back to reading books. Yes. This is a book you want. I love books. I love books. I've only written two, and mine are nothing like Dr. Carl's books. But I like books that are easy to, easily understood, that I can read and know what I'm reading, and I like books that have room for me to take notes, and yes. your books do. Thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you. And do, do you like books, so, and I'm kind of setting you up, but do you like books that make astounding claims, then they back them up yes, with I do. scholars and word studies? And I just want people to know, there are some stunning claims that we make let in me this tell book, you so, but yes. I'm not pulling them out of my back pocket is what no, I'm trying to say. No, people have seen this for hundreds of years, but yes. the church has sanitized it. That's right. They won't talk about That's these right. things from the pulpit. That's and right. people need to know this. God's That's people right. need to know it. Go to your phone right now. I've got, uh, how many copies do I have here with me tonight? Five? Oh, we can get more for you. Uh, we can get more, but we got five on hand here tonight. If five people would go to their phone right now, and you can put on your credit card, you can mail the check in, but let me know what you're doing. 251 654 5573 and uh, help us with this. Mm -hmm. But some of those things he's talking about, uh, I would, uh, yeah. before I read the book, I was reading the back, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, there's a lot of stuff there. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of stuff here. But the contextual biblical truth that may forever change what you thought you knew about death. Yes. Yes. We, we're going to touch that in just a second. We're going we're to gonna give you just a little bit, not all of it, because you need yes. to get the book. It usually shocks people when I get into it. So I want you to give them just a teaser on that one. Mm -hmm. And then another thing in this book that is amazing, uh, what the Bible discloses about time travel. Yep. Multiple yep. dimensions. Portals. And portals. People yep. talk a lot it's about that today in 2020. Scientific, uh, sci some, a lot of scientific evidence. We're living in the days of George Jetson. Yeah, we are. And beyond. George Jetson didn't even have a cell phone. And George Jetson didn't have a cell phone. No. Uh -uh. But it's in this book. So give us just a, because we want them to get the book, just a little bit. I have to be careful when I do that because sometimes <laughs> I'll say something and then some, somebody's out there, you know, they say, that's heresy. He, well, you know, yeah. he doesn't that's know what why they need to get That's the why book. they need to get the book. To prove that this is not heresy. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but what is the contextual biblical truth about death? 
Okay. Well, listen, it's all right there in the scriptures, and I'm going to share some things that people are going to say, oh, I've been knowing that since Sunday school. But then I'm going to, after I've shared it, I'm going to whoom, take Go it to a different level. Go okay? So you have glimpses of what's beyond mm -hmm. that were given through the scriptures. Right. And one of them was right out of the mouth of Jesus himself, the account of the rich man and Lazarus. Okay. Okay? That's right. So, so he talks about a rich man who dies and is in hell. Now, that word hell is translated different ways from the Greek, but basically it means a holding place, prison. Mm -hmm. How do we know that? Because right. in Revelation 20, it says, death and hell gave up the dead that were in them, and they were brought before the great white throne of judgment, and they were thrown into the lake of fire, which is the second death. Right. So there's two deaths okay. for people who don't know the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yet for, and what does death mean? Well, that's, see, this, you got to read sorry. this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, so let me just stay on track here because this is just gets so yes. deep, but it's all right there in the Scripture. So you've got Lazarus in paradise. you got the rich man in the holding place. He's in prison. Yeah. And in between is a chasm. Yeah. It's like, whoosh. Yeah. Abraham is able to transverse that chasm. Why? Mm. Well, Jesus holds all the keys to everything. To yeah. all of the dimensions That's of right. reality. That's right. So he is conversing mm -hmm. with the rich man. Jesus is telling us this. Mm -hmm. Some people say, well, that was a parable. Well, what's a parable? It's a, an earthly story to, de to depict a spiritual mm -hmm. reality. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's a parable because he's naming names. And he doesn't even present it as a parable. He That's just right. said, look, there was a rich man. That's I'm not right. going to call his name because it's going down the word forever, and I don't want to shame him that bad. But then there, he had a beggar named Lazarus that That's was right. eating at his, the scraps from his table. Lazarus died, but because he was a man that sought after God, he went to paradise. Mm -hmm. The rich man, all he cared about was his money and his power. Mm -hmm. Stomped on the little people below him That's all right. of his life. Yeah. And he went <clears throat> to prison, to hell, to the holding place. Mm -hmm. And when he's there, he realizes, oh my gosh, I'm mm -hmm. still alive. Oh my gosh, I still feel, I thirst, I, I, I feel pain. I, I'm in torment in this place. Why is he in torment? Because he can look, somehow he can see Lazarus. Yeah. And he sees the paradise that Lazarus has that he'll never get. Never. Never. Too and late. then, it was, okay, so, so the point, we got that picture. Here's another picture. Jesus on the cross, getting ready to draw his last breath. One of the thieves finally gets it, turns to him, says, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus turns to him. Now, the, what I'm getting ready to say, the picture I'm going to show is not spelled out in the scriptures, but I just can't imagine that it's any other way. Mm -hmm. I think at that point, Jesus turned his head. I think through the blood, the agony, I think he smiled at him. I think he said, that's when he said, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. That's the same paradise he was speaking of, Lazarus. Today, today, not tomorrow, not 10,000 years, not going to sleep in your grave, you're not going to, today, in just a few seconds, yeah. you're going to breathe your last in that body, but in a few seconds, mm. you're going to see a flash of light, and then you're going to realize that you are in your body, but it is now glorified. You, the person of who you are, mm will be, will be, being. You will have being. You won't be a ghost. You won't be yeah. floating on a cloud. You won't be a wisp of smoke. Yeah. You will be with me mm -hmm. in person, in paradise, in my Father's house. Paradise are many mansions. That's if right. it were not so, I would not tell you I'm not lying. And if I go, I'm going to go and prepare a place for you. And if I prepare a place for you, I'm coming back and I will receive you unto myself. Mm. He speaks to the thief. He says, you're going to get that today. In the next few seconds, just hang on, my friend. Hang yeah. on. Whew. There's another. So, so these things <laughs> yes. we've heard preached. Yes. We've said, but what's underneath them that's even deeper than that? Mm -hmm. Death is an interdimensional travel and experience. Mm -hmm. The Word of God makes this clear from beginning to end. That's why Jesus says, <clears throat> after, after the cross, after the resurrection, that's why Paul says about all this, so, oh death, where is your victory now? Mm. Where is your sting? Because, you see, prior to the cross and the resurrection, mm -hmm. it was so easy for the whole planet to fear death because there was no way to, to understand what it was all about. Right. Jesus right. dies a bloody, gruesome, horrible, earthly death. His body ceases to work. He's mm -hmm. dead. He's put in a grave like all humans are. Mm -hmm. 
Three days later, he's walking around. He says, do you believe me now? <laughs> do you get it now? Yeah. Because I live, now you know you wow. will live also. Why? Because I've come back to show you I can go through dimensions. Mm -hmm. And because if you're under my blood, you will go through the dimensions with me. That's why he told the thief on the cross, Jack, hang on, man. A few mm -hmm. seconds, you're going to be with me. We're going to walk right through a veil. Right over there. What do you think the veil in the, in the temple represents? That's right. And why do you think it was rent from top to bottom when Jesus died? Mm -hmm. I mean, an earthquake. I mean, it was all a, an image of, look, it's all coming together. Because in the end of it all, a new heaven, a new earth. Watch this. The skies will recede like a scroll. That's the right. stars will, will appear to be falling. But why? Because the curtain will be pulled back. That's right. Everything is that the men will flee because they'll see the face of God. They'll hide themselves in the rocks and stump and beg for those that are unredeemed for the rocks to fall on them. Why? Because a dimensional shift is taking place. The ancient scholars who didn't understand about dimensions and portals and time right. travel and interdimensional, right. which now quantum physics pretty much proves all that. That's what the CERN Hedron right. Collider is about in yep. Switzerland. China, China's building one even bigger because they know that these dimensions exist and they're looking for the portals. They'll tell you that on their websites. Mm -hmm. And they're not talking religious stuff. They're talking science stuff. Yeah, yeah. They know that. Well, the Word of God has been telling us all along. There's heaven. There's hell. There's prison. There's the lake of fire. There's a paradise. Um, there's the earthly life. Um, it's all, there's a chasm between, there's another dimensional uh, transportation where you've got to have a key to get through. Jesus said, but don't worry, I hold the keys. I hold I the keys to all of it. All things that were created That's were created good. by him and for him. Mm -hmm. And in him, all things hold together. It's all right there in the word of God. So the truth about death is this. For a believer, everything he, Jesus said, of course, is true, but yeah. it's, it's, Listen, you haven't finished the book yet. When you get to the last, <laughs> when you get to the last four or five chapters, yeah. I've had grown men, I mean men that I know, call me up a couple months. You know, mm -hmm. they're reading it here and there, and mm -hmm. they were loving it, and they were taking notes, and they finished it. I've had them call up and weep over the phone. Wow. I, I promise, brother, I'm not exaggerating. Wow. My wife's watching this. She'll tell you I'm not. And they've said, I was blown away by mm -hmm. the book, but also the last several chapters when it hit me what death meant to a believer. It's glorious. It's unbelievable. My dad, I just lost my mom this last year. I preached her funeral. My dad was reading the book during, she had Alzheimer's and she was going down and down and down. He took care of her in his home to the last. I admire him for that too. Sure. And uh, he called me about four weeks after her passing. He was, he was weeping on the phone. He, he's not one of the men I was thinking of. I'm thinking about preachers and theologians yeah, that I know. Yeah. My dad said, oh my gosh, I should have read this before your mom passed, but I just didn't have time. He said, this answers it all. Mm. He says, I have so much peace. Now I understand the whole thing, the whole process. Wow. This is my dad. And I'm yeah. just on the other end of the line. Said, That's why God had me write it for my dad. Yeah. I had no idea. Wow. So, so, and we don't have time. You told me to give a glimpse. <laughs> and I promise you, I've only given a glimpse. Yeah. Of, yeah. of what the Bible says and, and, how, and what I've revealed in my book about what the Bible says. Our uh, minds just cannot comprehend. Paul said that. The, the things that God has for us. and the your eyes haven't seen, your ears haven't heard, no, your mind no. cannot conceive. Because he was there. He said, yeah. I was caught up to paradise. Yeah. You need to get this book. I promise you this is a book that will help you. You need to avail yourself of this and get it in your library to learn and to grow in the Word of God. These are things that have to, that we need to know. Yeah. Just like here's your dad saying, I wish I would have read this before she passed. Right. These right. are things we need to know now. as Christians now. right now. Right. And we've got to stop saying one day and do it now. Right. If you will text me at the number that's on your screen right now, your donation of $50, you're helping us out in this time of need that we have. And um, so for your donation of 50 bucks, we're going to send this to you. If you want it autographed, Pastor Carl will happily yes. do that. But if you want it autographed, you better do it in the next 10 minutes before we go off the air because he will be leaving. And we yeah. need to get him autographed before he leaves. So there's five here in the building tonight. So go to your phone. Five people right now. We desperately need to hear from you. Uh, we've got bills we have got to pay. 
and uh, we've got to be able to move forward, and the only way we can do that is with your help. So many good things are coming up here at DTV, and that's why yeah. we've got to stay current. One, everybody needs to stay current with their bills because it don't look good on us when we don't pay them. So we've got to stay current, and we need your help to do that, but we need help to continue doing. You know, now, in the last year, our power bill has yeah. skyrocketed because now we're, we're here a whole lot more. And uh, our power bill now, the, the, the low is usually around 800, and it's up. Because if you ever come in this studio, you know how good this air conditioner works. Because all these lights, you know, TV equipment has to stay at a certain uh, temperature 24 hours and a day. And it's cool. Uh-huh, and it needs to be cool. You can't, mm -hmm. it can't fluctuate yeah. and needs to stay. And because we're live now with Sunday Night Fire, we're live three nights a week here mm -hmm. in the studio. The cost goes up when you do all these things. So please, DTV is a blessing to you. Go to your phone right now, text and say, let me get that book by Dr. Carl Gallup's. And you know, um, the last time I had thought about doing this tonight and I thought, well, we'll wait to another time and we'll, we'll zero in on a specific subject. Yeah, thanks. Because I, like be I like to cover several things when you're here, but, we're, but we'll zero in on a, on a, on a specific subject. There's we about did, six or eight good subjects in there. Right. We yeah. did this on the radio one yeah. morning with, uh, with, uh, Zev. with, yeah, with Rabbi Zev and you, and we took live questions. Yes. And I guess probably one of, if not the, uh, largest clip we have on YouTube right now that gets the most views is the clip where the people are calling asking questions about the rebuilding of the temple. Yes. And in my book coming out in March, I've got several chapters about that. There you go. Yeah. But it's amazing some of the comments that we get yeah. Yeah. on uh, YouTube sure. from uh, people who uh, don't. Oh, and Becky said to let everybody know, I just got a text. Give me the exact date on that. It's exact not January. You're coming to preach Sunday Night Fire. Did you know you were coming? I don't to think so. Did you? You probably lined <laughs> Becky probably lined that up with all my my administrative assistants. I didn't know that, but yeah, praise God, you're coming to preach Sunday Night Fire. Well, I knew you okay. were coming. I just don't know the day. Okay. okay. So Pastor Carl will be back to preach. Wow. Sunday Night Fire. I'm honored, man. Yeah, Thank you. I think that may be in yeah. February or March. Yeah. What so, if I said live on there? I don't want to do that. Yeah. No, I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don't throw me in that briar patch. I don't want to it's preach. Like, I ain't preaching for y'all. <laughs> preach on TV? Why would I want to do that? <laughs> no, I'm honored, brother. So she's going to give me the date on that, but he is going to be here to preach. But please get this book, and you can go to his website if you want to get all of the books that he's written. Uh, also, there's information on your website about your weekly radio program. Yeah, carlgallops.com, my name.com. Carlgallops.com. Everything is there. The link to my church, all my books, radio programs, a lot of television shows have been on, yes, yours, others. Yes. Um, is, everything is right yeah. there on one page. My radio programs, I've got a a radio program with a large international yes, you audience. Did. You can yes. see the site map of that yes. and been doing it for 18 years. Wow. Yeah, it's called Freedom Friday with mm -hmm. Carl Gallops. We discuss everything happening in the world, pol political, <clears throat> geopolitical, and, and it's on secular stations and it's syndicated. And, and, and they, they, let me, they let me stick the word of God in and the gospel. Yeah. I actually let a guy to the Lord over the radio, on secular radio. Wow. I've done that, brother. I mean, it's amazing. Wow. So That's God's using cool. that too. Yeah. yeah, we've got archives. You can listen to the podcast, or you can listen to it live. And you, they can also go to the. Um, you can also go to the PTL network. Uh, that's Jim Baker's network mm -hmm. on Roku. Go to his channel, PTL, um, and uh, there there are some on demand sermons on there of uh, Pastor Carl preaching there at Morningside yeah. in Missouri. I've been very blessed to do that yeah. with them. Yeah. yeah. So you can, you can get a lot of the preaching uh, online as well. And uh, there's some YouTube stuff there as well you can catch out. But please call us tonight. Text us and let me hear from you. I wish you'd go ahead and do that in the next few minutes. Uh, we could go ahead and get these um, out to you because you definitely want to get this book. Gods of the Final Kingdom and then the new book will be out in March, mm -hmm. you said. Mm -hmm. nice. And I was, I was doing a little research on that earlier today. And... Um, with this one, uh, Pat Boone writes the forward Pat on that. Pat Boone one, yeah. writes the forward. I love Pat Boone. He and I, and I'm not dropping names, it's just true. No. He's writing the forward, so he got to know. But yeah, he and I, become, we've become very good friends. Yeah. And a lot of it has to do with some books I've written. He saw me on some interviews. He flew me out to California when his wife was still alive. He yeah. had me on air with her. We did some shows. We communicated since then. He read the manuscript to my new book coming out. 
uh, and he said, I would, I would love to write the forward to it. So uh -huh. I'm so, I'm so honored by that. It's exciting. So, um, I, he, I told my dad, I said, how does it feel <laughs> that yours and mom's uh, rock star idol when y'all were kids is, is writing the forward to your son's book? My dad says, son, I don't even know how to express that. I, he says, he says, it's a little surreal. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> I, right. I said, it is to me too. Wow. But Pat's a wonderful, wonderful yeah. guy. Yeah. He's, he is. We did a, uh, we did a uh, live 4th of July celebration here uh -huh. at the studio and uh, we had a great time band man they were kicking that night and we so i wore my red yes. coat my patriotic tie my white dress pants and white shoes, shoes. pat boone and when i come out they all started saying <laughs> you look like pat, pat boone. boone yeah with the white boots i'm like hey, I, know. I, know. I don't care I, know. I can't wear white boots all the time but when i can i'll I wear them so what was the name cool. of that movie? I'm putting you on the spot. That made him so famous decades ago. It was a science fiction movie. Oh, oh, oh. but it was it was a big hit. It was yeah. a, it was a big movie, and it really really put him on the map as an yeah, actor. They could Google it for us in the yeah, back. Yeah, and know. all the songs I, that he's written, oh and gosh. then his daughter. Wow, yeah. the songs yeah. she wrote. And then you know a lot of people don't know Debbie that Boone. Debbie Boone. Yeah, and then a lot of people don't know who his father-in-law was. I don't know if I do. Red Foley. You know, I did know that. I had forgotten yeah, that. Yeah, Red yes, Foley is Pat Boone's father-in-law. Right. Sure, and how can we not? I mean, you got to, everybody ought to know Red Foley, Peace in the Valley. Yes, and All those, yes. those great country songs that he used to sing. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't remember the name of that. Journey to that's the it. center of the Journey earth. Journey to the center of the earth. That's it. You know, one of her technicians just walked that's in it. and says, that's it. Hey, idiots, it's <laughs> Journey to the Center of the Earth. Of course, he was Googling it, so I mean, yeah, you know, right. it's not well, like that he technology just, we're yeah, talking yeah. about again. But that was it, Journey to the Center of the yeah. Earth, which became this huge hit yeah. in its day. Yeah. And he was the the headliner in yeah. it. So I mean that really and catapulted he, um, him. Um, and he and he had a program on TBN for many years. Yes, Pat did. Yeah, and I was. We need you to have Pat family. at your church, where we can all come over oh, there and have I'm a thinking. concert, hear him sing. That's what I'm thinking. That would be so awesome. Yeah, and yeah. I'm gonna have you there very soon. Well, We've already talked about that. You're on, I'm honored. Yes. All right, we got prayer requests here tonight. Okay, please keep my husband in prayers. He has back surgery on the 28th. Uh, someone praying for a marriage to be restored. Great grandbaby has pneumonia. And RSV in the hospital. Please pray for me and my family. Deliverance from drugs. Family member needs uh -huh. deliverance. And uh, another praying for marriage to be restored. Um, we've got just a few minutes. I'm going to have uh, Pastor Carl pray over these needs tonight. Okay. And uh, text us right now. Okay, and get your book. Let's pray, Pastor. Okay, okay. Father, we know that every one of these prayer requests yes. also represent what the enemy is trying to do in yes, these last God. days, marriages, homes, families, lives. And so, Father, we come against it in the name of Jesus. We yes. pray for these precious people. By your grace and by your mercy, would yes. you put your hand on them? Lord, you've told us that we can lift each other up yes. in prayer and that we can pray for healing. And that, so, Lord, we are gathering together tonight, yes. agreeing together, lifting them before your throne, yes. asking for your touch. Give them peace, even as we're praying now. Yes. Fill them with your spirit of sweetness and peace. Yes. In Jesus' name I ask. We are so glad Amen. you have been with Amen. us for celebration. Our prayer Thank is that you. today's program has been a blessing and an encouragement to you in your walk with the Lord. I've never had to is continually reaching out to spread the good news of Jesus Christ to all the world. We need your love gifts and prayers to help keep this ministry on the air 24 hours a day. So call us at 251-368-5433 or write us at DTV PO Box 1420 at Moore, Alabama 36504. Or you can contact us online at destinytelevision.tv. Thank you for your continued support, and remember, God loves you, and we do too.